Welcome back to the channel. So this time we're going to take on the new Tamiya A34 Comet. Fantastic tank and um, currently at the beginning of 2023 this is the newest model in their tank range. We're going to go at this one a bit more back to basics. So it's, it's an out of the box build. Uh, we're not going to complicate it with very much at all. We're going to add a few flame marks, a few things like that, but very basic stuff. Starting off, obviously, being a Tamiya kit and being brand new, we can uh, expect it to be a very good fit, and it is. It is very nice. So this um, lower hole is built up in sections, and this is the floor, and then we build up the sides, and we've got these uh, spars in the middle there, which um, help with locating. You can see on the rear piece here as well that's joining on, it's got these um, raised cylinders, if you like, circles that lock in and um, there you've got kind of a, a oval area which allows you to pull the Tamiya Extra Fin in. And it's a match made in heaven this Tamiya Extra Fin glue with Tamiya plastic. It works very well, it uh, reacts with the plastic very nicely. Uh, you can also see here again with the join you see those small little grooves cut out along the floor. That's to take the rounded sections there for the um, swing arms that go in on the outside of these uh, side plates. And you can see there it clips in with the two spars and the rear deck. It all comes up nicely and locks into place just how you'd want it to be. And uh, it, it is a very good fit. And, it, and it's just a touch of Tamiya Extra Fin along there and it brings it up very nicely. You get a very strong join and it's no problem at all. And there you can see this is all dry fit, no glue at the minute. We just bring on the other side and you can see how strong the fit is. Uh, we've got an outer plate that goes on to these side plates as well, again, which fits on, uh, no problem. So looking at the swing arms, it's time to get those on. So they're locked into position with this little pin, so you can't get it wrong and it levels them up. Now I haven't cleaned up any sprue gates or anything on these swing arms because you can't see them because you've got this plate that goes on the top of it. So it saves a bit of time there. Uh, so you don't need to worry about that too much. Now you can see the swing arms on, very positive location, and you can glue them up and they sit on nicely. And this is the outer piece going on as well, which locks all of that in together. And this is the kind of British design, very much like the um, the cruiser tank. So the Cromwell, the Crusader, etc. Not to forget, we get two poly caps and they need to go in here for the sprocket. So you've got to get that in first before the outer plate goes on and then that gets locked in by this uh, this piece here. And then it's time to glue up the sides. So again, you just make sure they're mounted in uh, with the supporting spars in the middle and also lining up along the bottom. And it creates a very nice, chunky, solid uh, hole, lower hole tub. Older kits, this would have been molded in one, but you can get a lot more detail if you mold it in this way, which is what Tamiya have decided to do. And it's a, a welcome welcome way to do it. And also uh, you can trust in the Tamiya engineering that this is actually gonna fit together nicely without any sort of vagaries or problems. And that does, I can report that that is the case. As long as you make sure all the joins come in, you might need to, once you've run the glue in, just pull it in to make sure it's where it is. Uh, but um, you've got a nice ridge running along the bottom there where I'm putting that glue to and that uh, that levels everything up, sorts it out, along with the, the back piece there as well. Then we've got this front section going on and then that just clips in quite nicely. You've got to get make sure it's uh, lined up and it will snap in like that. Then we've got this uh, piece going on as well, which helps for the, this is the idler really, it, it's at the front. And these are sided, so you don't need to worry about those. One has two pins, the other side has one pin, so you can't glue it in the wrong way. Even if you put the side on with one pin into the two pinned hole, it doesn't fit. So I thought I'd just show you that. And there they are, two pins, one pin. Very good from Tamiya, they often do this, you get sided parts. Uh, you've also got this as well, so looking at the this front section plate that goes on, we've got these side um, towing eyes, I guess, sort of uh, areas where, where you can put hooks on. And um, they go on, but also they've got an ejector pin mark that we need to sort out just there. But it's nice and easy. It is on the front face, so it is one that needs to be sorted out. We just go on with a sanding stick, nice and simple, smooth that out and you'll find that the ejector pin mark will be gone and there's no problem. 
and then you can go ahead and glue that part straight on the fact it's separate makes it a lot easier to get that sanded and then you just glue it on and you've also got a molded in weld bead there which is nice so we don't need to worry about adding anything like that across this model um the only thing really from a detail point of view is hollowed out gun barrels which we're doing here with a drill bit and um uh sort of handles on the back deck but you can throw a fair bit of stowage on this on the rear deck so that's one way of getting rid of it or you can cut them off and make your own out of wire but you would hope that tammy are going down this line they do sort of opt for simplicity over very finesse detail and they've chosen not to uh, add separate handles for the rear deck there's a lot of doors there on the engine deck so you can see just building up we're locking in the uh, machine gun and that moves and we've also got uh, this door as well which you can have posed open and then we're on to the sections of the upper part of the hole i'm just getting those in a few thing a uh, few covers around the uh, periscopes and now you can see we've got the most of the cop most of the hole built up and we're just starting to get some parts onto it now so we've got the front section going on there then we've got the lower the upper hole that clips into it all very i'm not messing about this is where it locks in this is i'm not sort of trying to make it look like it's better than it is it really just locks in then that rear deck's all one piece you can see the molded in handles that i'm talking about and then you've got the grill going on the back and there you are simple as that this is a very good kit to start with, something like this. Modern Tamiya is really, if you want to get into tank modelling, this is this is where you want to begin, really, because it just makes everything simple, and then you can go for more complex kits later down the line. Um, certainly, some of the older range of Tamiya as well can be a little bit more complicated than this. And these kits are up around the £50 mark, but I think it's very much worth it. One thing we don't cover in this, this sequence is the tracks, but they are link and length. And uh, that is very easy. It's one of the easiest ways to do the tracks. And a uh, nice little segue there into the wheels. So we've got the idler. Uh, this is two part and um, it's very easy to get the join matched up nicely. You've got those four sections there that you just line up. So you can't really get that wrong. Then we've got the sprue nibs and a seam line running around, but these are rubber tires. So uh, the best way I find getting these sorted is, is cut off most you can with your, your side cutters or your, your sprue nippers. And then you still always have a kind of mark showing. So from there, you sand that back when they're joined together. It makes it a lot more um, easier to get a level sanding across the two wheels. If you do them singularly, you can get a mismatch when you glue them together. And then as you look down the run of wheels, once they're glued on, that's when you can get kind of them out of line. It can be a bit tricky. So if you go around like this, you just go on the heavy areas. So I'm obviously starting on where the witness from the sprue gate is. And then just running around, circular motions with the sanding stick, moving the wheel around as I sand, trying to go all around like that where it's scuffed up. And then I'll just go over with a very soft low grit sanding stick and that will blend that out then we've got the uh, sprocket being built up so we put this guide ring on and then we put this back section on which does lock into place once you get it lined up right and that means that the two rows of teeth are, are in line with each other which you need to take the seating of the track when we come to put the tracks on because this is where the single links go around the sprocket and around the idler and then you've got one long section all molded together for the top run and one long section molded for the bottom run same with the main wheels as well we've got five of these road wheels there you can see the witness from the sprue gate and again we just glue that on get it joined together i always give them a twist so sort of press them together in a half twist and it makes sense to get the where the witness mark is lined up on both wheels so that when you go to sand them you're not sanding heavy on one section and somewhere else on another section there's also this nib as well on this one idler so you get four idlers at uh, return rollers sorry but one has this section there which um, takes the track and it's got a different mounting mark on the back and these are the normal road wheels so there's four on each side but one has that little nib so you've got to make sure it's not a sprue gate. So we've got the lights going on and then the light guards. 
Uh, I have actually glued the wheels on here and um, I was going to add that section in, but I seem to not have filmed it. But that is as simple as pushing the road wheels on, lining them up with a steel ruler and gluing them on. Then you can check it on a nice level surface, make sure all the road wheels are level, which they should be if you've got it right because of the way uh, Tamiya sets the swing arms. And then yeah, it's no problem. And I got all the wheels glued on actually and then left the sprocket so that it would go round. And we can paint the road wheels, the rubber tyres, no problem. We got this um, towing cable that goes on and it's wrapped around in a certain way like this. So I'm actually using this just to set the glue. I'm not gluing this in. I'm just putting it up here so I can get it glued together so it sits how I want it to sit on the front of the tank when we come to join it in. And then we can come back to that and lift it off and it will just ping off then when it's all glued together. So you see a line there in the middle, which I'm just gonna glue up. And then we push that together Make sure it's level and you'll find that it more or less disappears. And that means it's a very good join. And we've got this cover that just goes on. Now, you can, it is a bit of a faff, but there's another little um, cover up just in the top left. You see a sort of half circle there. I put all of those on. They're for, they're for guiding the rope into the position. And then you can kind of bend the rope when it's dry and it will flick out. So then you can paint it separately and then flick it back in. So the turret is uh, the way Tammy has gone in recent years. So you've got a sort of multi-piece um, side sections joining on to a central section of a lower part of the turret. And then you've got a turret roof going on the top of that. And it all is very positive locating marks. Just run the glue along. You don't need too much. Just hold it in place. And the join is very level, strong and good. Exactly what you want. You see there's a, be a tiny seam line, but that gets covered with a, a toolbox anyway. And we've got the mantlet going on, which has got some very nice um, cast texture. I mean, it's the section that holds the mantlet. It's the front of the turret, really. And then the mantlet has got a canvas cover. So we leave that separate. It's just again for the painting. You can see there that you glue it on nicely. It's a very fine join and then the turret roof goes on now i must say there was a little ridge on this you can see me sort of checking it and making sure it's all in line but it was slightly out of line and you can see it there now you see a little ridge around the top of the roof which i was quite surprised at so i thought it's time to get that glued together so we've got to make sure we get all the parts that go on from the inside and we've got these um i think they are for holding the doors open and you can see they can only go in one side this is the beauty of tamia so you can't get it wrong so once they're all in and you've got these two funny little um arms sticking out there as well that's for the crew figures to mount on so that they're in the correct position so once you've got the parts from the inside of the turret where you want them you're ready then to glue the turret roof on you can see again that still it's slightly out of line and I can only think that isn't me because I've got everything glued up the way it's meant to be. So I went with it and didn't worry too much about it. Um, so we've got the cupola getting joined together here now. And that's a nice piece, nice little two part feature there, which is uh, well detailed. So now I thought it was time to address this kind of lip, this join that you can see that isn't meant to be there. It's meant to be um, not sort of welded in, but it, it is joined in very nicely. So for that, we're just going to put in some um, flame marks, which is, we won't get into what that is. <laughs> I'm not an engineer. Tanks have ridges along some faces, and that's just, uh, we call them flame marks. And that's part of the uh, manufacturing process. So to get there, we want a nice flush join first so I'm sanding that level just to make sure there's no ridge and line running along that and then when we've got into position we're going to with a nice sharp blade just put straight lines all the way down as you can see I'm just working in this one little section and that's how you want to do it work in small sections don't try and go all the way around doing this so just go back and forth four or five times just getting these straight lines in and they want to they don't need to be massive 
like vertical um, necessarily, but they want to be running in the same same uh, direction. And then again, going across these uh, eyes, these little um, eyes that stick out for hooks and things to go on. You just run all the way around, and then you run along that with a little bit of neat Tamiya extra fin, and then don't touch it. And that will just blend it in nicely, and you can see the effect there. It will come through a lot better when we're under paint. But there you can see, just as it catches the light, we'll just put some lines in, and it just gives a bit of um, more interest. And I did that around all the towing hooks. And also where there's moulded in cast texture as well, I did stipple that a little bit, just with Tamiya Extra Fin. So just paint, go over with Tamiya Extra Fin, and then as it starts to dry, with the Tamiya Extra Fin brush that you see there, the applicator, I just sort of dab it along. So if you've got any sections that have got cast texture or anything where you're gluing them together, you can go back along and, and smooth that out like that. The uh, side fenders, with the front and rear fenders as well, I leave off so that we can get the tracks all sorted and paint the wheels. Uh, but we can mount these side stowage boxes and a few other little bits along there. Get that all glued on so it's in the right place so it makes painting easier. And then we can just unclip it, take it off <clears throat> and then add it on afterwards. I always find that's the best way to go about anything like this. If you can leave stuff off, leave it off. The more of it you can glue together, the better because it, it saves loads of tiny little parts and the same principle we're gluing this cupola on as well uh, and now what i found quite interesting here which caught me out is it's actually meant to be slightly off center and it is it, it points slightly off center so i'm trying to move it there but it's locked in with where tamia have got their locking pin for the join so that's all right and everything on that side is slightly out of center and that's um that's just the way it was done We've got this little cage going on as well, which is, I, I think, the gun sight. Now, it's a little bit heavy in plastic, although looking at the real thing at Bovington, it shouldn't be sort of paper thin either. So um, it's close enough, but that probably is a part that we could look to um, change out, and I'll probably leave it, leave it, leave it loose, as it were. Just tack it in with PVA glue so I can replace it later on if I want to. Now, the, um, this isn't a two-part barrel, it's a two-part muzzle brake, but there is a seam line running along um, this, and that's easily sorted just with a knife blade and then smoothed off again with a very light, uh, light grit sanding stick. You can see the join there on the muzzle brake. Again, with Tamiya Extra Fin, as long as you press it together nice enough, it gives you a very good join. Same here on the figures. Fantastically sculpted figures here in the pixie suit. Uh, but they have got a middle join, so you need to get them glued together. We're just doing that now. I like to do the figure work um, somewhere in the middle of the build. It's very easy to, and tempting to leave it to the end. But if you bring it along with the build, it's not such a daunting process. If you've just built a tank, you've done a base, you've done everything like that, and now you've got to paint two figures, it can be a bit of a drag. But if somewhere along the middle, when you're weathering the tank, you start painting the figures, start working on the base, it all comes to the end naturally. You can see there the sculpting on the faces. Brilliant stuff. Tamiya are just getting better and better at this. So that brings the build to an end. So it's a very simple one to start with this. Very well detailed, brilliant looking tank. You know, everyone starts talking about the uh, how great the Tiger was, but you know, give me a comment any, any day, I think. Look at this, look at this. Best of British, I think. Second World War British tank, late war, lovely thing to have in a brand new release from Tamiya. So if you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple of ways you can do that in the description box below. We're now having a little bit of a build series on the go here with tanks. So if you like what you see, do consider subscribing, staying tuned to the channel. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Hope that was of interest. This one will be continuing on next week with the painting. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting and I'll see you in the next video.